In this week's What's Going Around, there is still no flu activity being reported by the Virginia Department of Health. Possibility of snow in parts of the valley. Chief Meteorologist George Hirschman is outside with the details. Oh, and I see it falling, George. <laughs> yeah, the possibility has happened, Jay. A murder fugitive from St. Paul, Minnesota may be in the Virginia area, and police say he could be armed and dangerous. The man deputies say robbed a store owner at gunpoint last summer is behind bars tonight. All right, thank you, Meg. And Catherine Long says all she wants is an apology and for the deputy to admit he used extreme force with her. And this brings us to today's poll question. What type of punishment should be given to people who are convicted of stealing information on the Internet? Still a few years until she goes to college. College, but a Rockingham County fourth grader already has a way to pay for it, and they're going to go sing karaoke, which I know is your favorite thing to Maybe do. Maybe I'll serenade Paris Hilton. <laughs> Joe, you always find a way to uh, bring the Steelers into it, don't you? Yeah. My favorite costume was always Rosie the Riveter. Oh, there you go. That was a fun uh, yeah. one. Yeah, I never saw that one. Well, email George and tell him 51 is hot. <laughs> Good night, Jerry. Hokies unite once again to put an end to a semester that has forever changed their university. Coming up, we'll take you to Blacksburg as the class of 2007 says goodbye. You're watching WHSB News 3. 11 minutes of nonstop news and weather starts now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamie Carrot. Thousands of Virginia Tech graduates found themselves fighting back tears tonight as they graduated less than a month after one of their own went on a killing rampage. The April 16th shootings were no doubt the center of tonight's commencement ceremony, but many, including this year's keynote speaker, four-star General days, John Abizade, still found it hard to find the right tone. Nearly 5,000 graduates are leaving Blacksburg tonight, making sure their college experience isn't defined by tragedy. I am positive that your meanings have changed for you as well, but rest assured, we will define ourselves by where we have been and where we will go. Virginia Tech President Charles Steger issued class rings to relatives of the 26 victims. Diplomas will come at smaller ceremonies tomorrow. Our Kelly Creswell is live in Blacksburg tonight. She joins us now with more on Virginia Tech's graduation. Kelly? Friends, you know, don't take it for granted. Well, Kelly, I know earlier you said that everyone was very upbeat during the graduate ceremony, but was the mood a little different during tonight's main ceremony? Jamie, it was very different. Six Muslim men suspected of plotting to kill American soldiers at New Jersey's Fort Dix have been ordered held without bail. Prosecutors argued that the men, all born outside the U.S., may try to leave the country. They are being held at a federal detention center in Philadelphia. Well, the men were arrested Monday night during what the FBI said was an attempt to buy AK-47 machine guns, M-16s, and other weapons. Court papers say the men targeted Fort Dix partly because one of them had delivered pizzas there and was familiar with the base. A JMU author on Homeland Security says this appears to be a new type of self-organized threat. Just in this situation, it was a person in the video store that actually um, alerted officials. The best thing we can do is um, to have um, our, our citizens be aware of the, the, um, these new threats. If you'd like to see the entire one-on-one -on -one interview on Homeland Security, you can go to WHSV.com and click on the video player list on the right-hand side of the page. America's anniversary weekend has officially kicked off to celebrate Jamestown's 400th anniversary. Events will last through Sunday with concerts, fireworks, and an appearance by President Bush on the closing day. Virginia has been recognizing the birthday of America's first permanent English settlement every 50 years since 1807. A local group of young people are traveling to Jamestown to perform. The Blue Ridge Bells from the C.F. Richards Academy in Stanton will be performing at America's 400th anniversary this Sunday. The group came by our studios today as part of the News at Noon Spring Concert Series. Well, we are going into Mother's Day weekend, but for many floral shops in the Valley, it's been Mother's Day week. The busiest month for flower shops is May. Carla Yoder is the owner of Artistic Flowers in Harrisonburg. She says, although Valentine's Day is a busy day, everyone can relate to the day set aside for mom. You know, Valentine's Day, not everybody has a sweetheart, but everybody has a mom, and moms like flowers. <laughs> And in case you forgot, we called around to several flower shops in the Valley to see if it was too late for Mother's Day deliveries. And for some, it is, but many shops say it won't hurt to give a call first thing tomorrow morning for pickup orders. 
And of course, flowers are a nice substitute, but being there on Mother's Day is always preferred. Our Lori Lee Victorino spoke with a Valley soldier getting ready to head overseas, but not before he makes this Mother's Day a special one for his mom. It's usually a surprise, so I don't want to give it away. So she, in case she's watching the night, but uh, I usually have something pretty special planned for Mother's Day when I'm when I'm here to spend it with her. And Gibson leaves for Iraq next month for a year. Not too bad out there tonight. Some of those storms could be a little bit more on the severe side because of this big spike there with the temperatures. Okay. So we'll see how it is. But generally a good the weekend. The summer like temperature storm. Yeah, for one day. All right. For one day. And then, to, <laughs> and then tomorrow uh, is the uh, May Fest up in Luray. Mm. And uh, get out and enjoy that, folks. Beautiful country. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, George. Well, still to come on the news at 11, a beef recall of more than 100,000 pounds includes meat shipped here to Virginia. And we'll tell you how you can help your mail carrier stamp out hunger. Stay with us. A fast burning fire scorched a Stanton home today. It started at around 1130 this morning on Davis Street. Fire crews say the blaze started from a dryer that overheated in the basement and caught items near it on fire. Two people were home when the fire broke out, but officials say they got out without getting hurt. Habitat for Humanity in Augusta County wants to start creating more environmentally friendly homes. And as our Shane Smolin reports, they're going to help more than just Mother Nature. In WHSV News 3. The families will be able to move into the houses by early fall. Well, the Postal Service and Blue Ridge Area Food Bank are teaming up to help fight hunger. Stamp Out Hunger is a national event that will be held tomorrow. The food bank is asking residents around the valley to leave food next to their mailboxes. Postal carriers will pick up the canned food tomorrow while they drop off the mail. We'll have um, trucks at all the different post offices. We'll cover Harrisonburg, Waynesboro, Stanton, uh, and all of Augusta and Rockham County as well, even down into the Lexington area. So. The food bank is asking for canned, non-perishable items only, and you can also drop off food at the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank to help fight hunger anytime. Researchers say a popular music device may be throwing some people's rhythm off when we return how iPods and folks with pacemakers don't mix iPods bring rhythm into our lives, but new research finds they may be causing some hearts to skip to a dangerous beat. Here's our Medical Minute with ABC's Dr. Timothy Johnson. Walk down a city street. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says PM Holdings Meat Company has been linked to an E. coli outbreak, and the company is now recalling more than 117,000 pounds of beef shipped to eight states, which include Virginia. Agriculture officials say the beef trim was produced on March 27th and turned into ground beef, sold under many different retail brand names. Paris Hilton and Patrick Dempsey are just a few of the stars who may be walking the streets of Stanton next week. It's all part of a celebrity car race across the country. Here's WHSV's Meg Gatto with the Celebrity Dish. WHSV News 3. All right, Damon, I know you're dying to know if you want to catch a glimpse. Of course I am. Apparently, Patrick Meg. Patrick Dempsey, Dr. McDreamy. <laughs> Dr. McDreamy, exactly. Apparently, Meg says that they're going to be staying at the Stonewall Jackson, and they're going to have dinner at Latalia, and they're going to go sing karaoke, which I know is your favorite thing to Maybe do. Maybe I'll serenade Paris Hilton. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, before we go, George, Mother's Day. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll quick uh, look now. <laughs> we don't care about tomorrow. A couple of quick Mother's showers uh, south of the I-64. It might even be a little thunderstorm down <laughs> that way. Uh, be careful. Uh, a chance of some rain overnight. Mother's Day, 7 degrees, lots of sunshine. Take Looks your mother to brunch good. and eat outside. Have a happy Mother's Day weekend. Starts now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamie Carrot. We will get to JMU's upset in a moment, but first, snow didn't quite pan out for us today. So what happened and what's next? Meteorologist George Hirschman is in the First Alert Storm Center with the story. George? Jamie, we got the big fizzle. Uh, a couple <laughs> of things happened, and I'll show you what happened right now. All right, thank you, George. And remember, whenever bad weather hits, you can always turn to our First Alert traffic cameras by going to WHSV.com and clicking on the First Alert traffic button. Right now, you are looking at a live picture of exit 315 on Interstate 81 in Winchester, where things are looking clear and dry. Well, things are anything but clear for other parts of the country tonight, where winter weather has its grip stretching from the west to the east coast. Oklahoma is dealing with its second storm in as many days. Now, police say there the roads are very tricky. And in North Carolina, at least one death is now blamed on a storm that drops snow and sleet across the southeast. Police say a man died when his car skidded on an icy road and collided with a tractor trailer. 
Now, while the snow missed us, winter will still be hitting us hard with temperatures dangerously dipping down into the single digits. Shane Samolin joins us now live in Harrisonburg. Shane, how is it looking out there? Well, Jamie, it is pretty cold out here tonight. The rest of us, Jamie. All right, thank you very much, Shane. Another Valley man's dream to use alternate power is also a reality tonight. Homeowner John Root now has the largest working wind turbine in the state. The 120 foot wind system will generate enough power to run an entire household and greenhouse. The construction and engineering of the wind turbine meets all Augusta County codes. Now for our other top story tonight, we go to WHSV Sports Director Joe Downs. He has just returned from covering another exciting game at the JMU Convo, but this time it was the women's turn to shine. Joe? You know, Jamie, I said it back to you, Jamie. All right, thank you very much, Joe. Good news tonight for folks earning minimum wage. The Senate wants you to get more money. In a 94 to 3 vote, the bill will boost minimum wage by more than $2 to $7.25 an hour. Senator Edward Kennedy called the increase a small but necessary step. The Augusta County School Board says its construction at Stewart's Draft High School and Wilson Memorial High School is right on schedule. Teachers and students have already moved into the science wings of the schools. Math and social studies wings should be done by the middle of February. Also, the new offices are in. But still to go are the new English foreign language wings, which should be done sometime in April, and the new gymnasiums and auditoriums. The project is to wrap up in December of this year. Well, the man deputies say robbed a store owner at gunpoint last summer is behind bars tonight. 21-year-old Marcus Howard allegedly pulled a gun on the owner of the country store on Mount Torrey Road in Augusta County and made off with more than $1,800. Deputies say Howard also fired two shots at customers who tried to stop him as he made his escape. He was already in custody for unrelated charges but was charged with the robbery yesterday. If convicted, he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. Students and teachers at Westwood Hills Elementary School in Waynesboro kicked off a food drive today to benefit the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. Dr. Seuss even stopped in to help get the kids motivated to bring in food. The school is stressing the importance of bringing in healthy food for the less fortunate. Students and teachers hope to collect 2,500 pounds of food for the food bank during the month of February. Oh my. Yeah, that's cold. All right, thanks a lot, George. Childhood obesity is on the rise. Still to come, we'll take you to a valley gym trying to help with the epidemic. And one city wants to make its waterways friendlier. Details are on the way.